Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to the fifth discussion of the series, The Choice is Ours. Today we're going to talk literally about Surah Saad and the translation of the verses 67 to 85. I would like to highlight a few things. As I go to the translations, there will be few items, few verses that I've highlighted. These verses we're going to discuss in more detail in the next podcast. The other thing I want to highlight is every slide will have three verses. I will just read the English. And another aspect is when I see something important to call out, I will call those out as we're going through this because these discussion points will lay the foundation of the future of the discussion series. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, say it is a great news from which you are turning away. Now, in these two verses, I want to highlight the translation that I'm using. It has some items mentioned in brackets. They are not called out in the Arabic. So it's the interpretation of the translator. Translation has an important aspect to play in the Quran because some people translate things which are not how an Arabic speaker would translate these things so it is important to recognize those aspects and i will call those out i would also like to highlight one thing is because a lot of like english speakers for rc urdu turkish you name it any other language they all have translations so if someone says that you should not read the Quran because you do not understand the meaning and the translation is not right, that is wrong. You have to read the Quran and you should read the translation whichever is the best available or whatever is available. At least it gives you a broader sense of what Allah is saying in his book. And yes, there are things that are not easily understood and that's why we're having this discussion because these verses 67 to 85 have significant deep meanings. So let's start these again. Uh, I'll talk, start from verses 67. Say it is a great news from which you're turning away. What is that great news? That is a question that we need to be asking. Then Allah says in verse 69, I had no knowledge of the highest assembly when they differed concerning Adam. Now, this is Allah. These are Allah's words, which Allah is saying basically that the prophet say, I had no knowledge of the highest assembly when they differed concerning Adam. There is a really important meaning in this particular verse about uh, the prophet, وسلم, and we're going to talk about that. Then Allah says, what is revealed to me is that I am only sent with a clear sign, clear warning. Remember, O Prophet, when your Lord said to the angels, I am going to create a human being from clay. So when I have fashioned him with and had a spirit of my own breath into him, fall down in prostration to him. In this these two verses, there are really important aspects. The first one talks about what Allah was intending. Verse 71, uh, that Allah said to angels that I am going to create a human being from clay. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, as we discussed, Allah talk of, talks about that that human being will be my Khalifa. In verse 72, Allah talks about prostrating, going into sajda before his Khalifa. Again, very deep meanings that we need to, we'll talk about in more detail. So the angels prostrated all together, but not Iblis who acted arrogantly, becoming unfaithful. There is an important aspect over here that when Iblis rejected, he became a Kafir. He did not reject from doing a sajda in front of Allah. He rejected doing sajda in front of the Khalifa of the Allah that Allah ordered. 
and the consequence was he became a kafir. Very important point that we're going to talk about. Then Allah says in verse 75, He said, meaning Allah said, O Iblis, what did prevent you from prostrating yourself before what I created with my hands? Did you wax proud or were you among the lofty ones? Now over here, this is a point where when you read the translations, there are different versions that people have used to hide something, I would say. For example, the word astakbarto, astakbarta is used for being arrogant, for being proud, to have pride. And then Arlene is a, it, it's the, the plural of Ali, meaning they're someone who's lofty multiple ones not only one if you read different translations and you can go to quran.com and see different translations some people have said oh were you arrogant or were you already arrogant they just use the same word for stuck bartha and alin even though they're two different words they have two different meanings so this is an important point where you need to think about some people are either intentionally changing the translation or they don't even understand. So you have to think about that when you're reading the Quran. Again, it doesn't mean that you should not read. You should absolutely read. But with this understanding, you will be able to read and see, oh, was there something missing over here? Because the words of the Quran are not changing. It's just the translation that people are uh, trying to manipulate or have tried in the past. Then Allah says, he replied, I am better than he is. You created me from fire and him from clay. He said, then get out from here for you are accursed. And surely you is upon you is my condemnation until the day of judgment. Now, this is a very interesting point. Verse 78 talks about Yom ad -Din. Now, just think about it. The Quran wasn't revealed at that time. The angels, or there was no Satan, Iblis was in the heavens. How come Allah is mentioning Yom ad -Din? It means Yom ad -Din was already there. We're going to talk about this topic uh, more in our detailed discussion. Satan appealed, my Lord, then delay my end until the day of their resurrection. Allah said, you will be delayed until the appointed day. Satan said, by your glory, I will certainly mislead them all, except your chosen servants among them. Allah concluded, the truth is, and I only say the truth. I will surely fill up hell with you and whoever follows you from among them all together. Now, this is interesting point. Satan is saying, I will mislead them. From the very beginning but on what point what type of misleading is he going to do is he going to mislead people from following the true khalifa like he himself misled himself from bowing before the true khalifa of allah which resulted in people which resulted in himself thrown out of the heavens and does he want to do the same with the people with the humans we're going to talk about this more so bottom line there are a lot of interesting concepts in surah saad which will lay the foundation of the test and what do we have to do from a test perspective and that needs more clarity in our faith more clarity in our understanding of islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa